important. Yeah, it's wonderful. Thanks, John. So welcome, everybody. Normally, you get just my face, don't you, with lots of hand movements. But today, it's going to be the opposite. I'm going to put slides up because what we're going to talk about generationally, you need to have information in front of you. Um, I'm going to make these available. So please don't feel you have to write anything at all because the slides have got lots of information on. But it's I hope this morning, my aim this morning is it's going to be um, basically really interesting and fun. And I hope it's gonna help us with communication when we're talking with our families, when we think about our own blind spots as our generation, as we kind of look at climate crisis and in your churches, because obviously we're all coming from a different backgrounds. So, so let me start screen sharing and go, let me just go back to that. And let's just move up to the top of the thing. Okay, great. Pardon the rush back. Do, 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 do. Right. Wonderful. Can you all see that? Put your waves your hands. Yeah, wonderful. So we're going to look at the generations. And obviously, this is an artificial exercise in some respects, because, um, you know, generations don't fall neatly into the day that you were born. But these are generalized um, kind of, yeah, sociological looking at how we how we fit into generations. So what in a minute, not just yet, but Ruth's going to put a poll up. I want you to just have a quick flick. We've got the greatest generation are called the ones born between 1910 to 1928. You may or may not know anybody still alive in that generation. My nan is 101, so I obviously do. But so I would suggest you link someone in your head when you go through these and think, oh yeah, I know someone who is a, the greatest generation. The silent generation, we'll talk about them in a minute. They're the ones born 1928 to 1945. Then we've got the boomers born 1946 to 1964. Then the generation X, which is um, born 1965 to 1980. So I'm in that generation. Then you've got the millennials born 1981 to 1996. Generation Z um, born 1997 to 2012. And then I've got the grid in the way here. So I can, hang on, move it across. Generate. Then we've got generation alpha, which is born uh, 2012 to 2025 and there's a little quote at the bottom there which is the average period generally considered to be about 20 to 30 years during which children are born and grow up then when they become adults and they begin to have children who experience the same significant events within a given period so obviously you're living in a very different in context in different families but we are living through certain sort of national and international events okay so now thought at the start what generation are you? Rather than post in the chat, Ruth, I know, is now going to pop a poll up. Can you do that, Ruth? Is that all right? So all I want you to do is to, to just tap the one that you are. Um, Ruth, if you make me non-host, I think, again, because I can't put mine on there. And then we're just going to see a quick poll. I'm not sure if you can still share the screen if I make you. All right, don't worry, darling. We'll just add another Generation X. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll add, yeah, I'll add mine as well. Yeah, good point. That's fine. So all the, this is like, this is, this is great. This is like on a reality TV show. So far, the boomers are ahead. They're running to the finish line. Generation X, quite a few of us in there. A few millennials and a few, so I think we're probably finished. So okay. as we can see, 63% on this particular call are boomers. So that is the predominant voice. I just want to say at the beginning that CCA do not represent the rest of the country. We're an anomaly. Because as we look through this, you would expect to see far more Gen Zs, for example. Now they may well be in the youth uh, climate group, but that's not the point. The point is boomers, well done, and silence for being here at all. So we are an anomaly. So that's just, it's just an interesting um, flashpoint. Great, Ruth, can you take that down now? Is that all right? Is it gone? Great. Okay. So this morning, why, why are we doing it? Well, I was on a course recently, about two months ago, where we looked at this in a group of 20s in our church. And it was absolutely fascinating about why certain people do certain things, what people have lived through, what happened in the world as they were growing up. Um, and it was a really, I found it fascinating, reflecting for me, thinking, oh, my goodness, I lived through that. No wonder I think dot, dot, dot. There are some general trends for each generation, as I've said. And then I want to look really in the breakout rooms. We're going to look at how we can build or how this influences and, and um, helps us sort of communicate and, and what's stopping certain generations getting involved in MVDA, because there might be some general trends. So 
I hope this is useful, but I hope it's also a bit of fun. So why are we doing it? Well, we know, give me a child until he's seven and I will show you the man, Aristotle. And as a therapeutic coach, you know, we know this, but I know this significantly. You've got the naught to five, 90 percent of the brain development happens then. What a child lives through in that period is pr profound. But then at adolescence, you've got this enormous boom again, about 14 of neuro neuron pathways kind of reconnecting. So you've got these two enormously powerfully important kind of um, impactful times of life. Now, we look at COVID at the minute and think, OK, significant impact on the under fives and on adolescents. So don't make no bones about that. What will we see in 10 years time? We don't know. You take the climate for the climate angst around that and you've got some sort of interesting things looking forward. But looking at the generations who've been formed, these pivotal times will have you know, been going into their psyche. Now, Mannheim 1928 says, the social consciousness and perspective of youth reaching maturity in a particular time and place is significantly influenced by the major historical events. No surprise there. A few disclaimers very quickly. They're general trends. It's not an exact science. Um, your position in your family will affect your generation if you're kind of on the edge. If you're the eldest and you've got lots of younger siblings, then that will affect it. If you hang out or work with different ages, that can blur your generation. So I do a lot of work with 20s and teens. So that will blur my generation because I'm hanging out with them a lot. Equally, if you're working in care work, you're working with older people, that will also affect your uh, view. There are generational boundaries. Um, slightly different sources will show that. Different ones work on different things. We are in the UK, so I'm not looking at what's happening in Asia or, or the USA. We're looking at the UK. It, it doesn't take either into account the Enneagram, if you're familiar with that, or any personality type thinking or your political leanings or anything like that. So I am Enneagram type two. Um, I'm left wing. I was brought up in a happy family. You know, it's not taking on board that. And I'm not an expert. But these are some general things which I hope will be helpful. And we said that one at the bottom there. Great. A couple of silly memes for you. Snowflake generation. OK, boomer. You've heard that before. These are the sort of the generational divides um, caricatured in these these memes, which I think is just a bit of fun. So here we go. Millennials. You took everything from me. Boomers. How do I open this PDF? OK, you see that sort of thing. Generation X. Remember us? I remember having one of those and walking down the street with that on my shoulder. Generation X actually are interesting. They're considered to be the forgotten generation, which we'll come on to in a minute. And then this one's great. Just remember, for every boomer that hates a millennial, there's a generation in between that hates you both. Sincerely, Generation X, which I think is great. So what has happened in the world as each generation grew up and what are the general trends? So we're going to just go through them just little by little. So the greatest generation, 1910 to 1924. Obviously, these guys are 97 to 111, not many left, um, fought in the, in the World War II. They are the parents of the boomers, the baby boomers. There's an often that hero worshipping sense within that generation. Hence, if you look at the kind of the Prince Philip and the, the Winston Church or those sorts of feelings. And by society, they're often viewed as the survivors, that they just got on with it and they're stoical. And, uh, you know, Major Tom there is a kind of a good example of what that greatest generation has held up as. It has affected the way that we talk about war and it has affected our harking back to the good old days. Just bear that in mind as well. So that's that generation. Not much on them because there's not many of those actually alive still. The silent generation are called the silent generation because they didn't protest. There were no major wars to oppose when they were in that year of growing up. OK, so they were born during the Great Depression or the Second World War. And then some of these are some of the events that they would have lived through. So. Again, if you're in this, if you were in the silent generation on the on the poll, you might have different ones that resonated. Hold on to those because these might not be yours, but this is just some. 1953, Queen Elizabeth's coronation. Bear in mind then, of course, the response to Philip's death. If you've been there at her coronation, you've lived through her whole life and marriage. It's going to affect that. First ascent of Everest. Um, parents were mostly the lost generation. So many were brought up in that, in that context, that background. So again, that's just what's gone on through through that. And, and I would love to hear after breakout rooms from any of the silent generation about anything else that you felt was profoundly important. We're going to spend more time focusing on the boomers and follow on because they're more the majority. So baby boomers, end of the Second World War, NHS established. 
they grew up in a growing economy. So there's a correlation there between birth rate and economy. The world's population hit 3 billion. 96 is the pill with all that that meant. OK, you can picture that. The swinging 60s, assassination of JFK and Martin Luther King, civil rights movement being born. Again, that's affected it. Man landing on the moon, the sense of deep optimism. You know, we can do anything. Um, Greenpeace was founded and then we had the Vietnam and the Cold Wars. So that's what's going on. Just some of them in the background. These are some of the characteristics. Now, this is probably where you need to focus in on a little. Think about yourself. Some will resonate, some will not. But think about the friends you've got in this category. Got divorced twice the rate of their parents. So that's a change in the way the family set up. Sexual freedom was embraced. Considered often to be the hardworking, independent, competitive, disciplined, team orientated, consumer slash spenders, and many would view the Britain as the great, the Britain as the great part of Great Britain. Okay. And the little quote here from Time magazine better educated, twice as likely to go to college as their parents, idealistic, assertive, they were expected to remake the world. Interesting when you look later. Baby boomers will describe themselves. If you ask how they are, they will say, well, often you'll hear them say, oh, I'm, I'm busy. OK, I'm busy, which fits in with the hardworking, independent, competitive discipline. I'm busy. That's a characteristic to be praised. OK, we can see how that's going to have some, some sort of uh, challenges when it relates to younger generations. <laughs> so that's some of the characters of the baby boomers. Generation X, my generation, called the forgotten generation. It's just a, and you might hear them called the baby bus generation. That's partly because it's the squeeze generation. Loads of boomers, loads of millennials and less of us. Um, this is some of the things we live through. 1972, Northern Ireland, Bloody Sunday, Watergate scandal, the winter of discontent. China's one child policy begins, which is just interesting on the world stage of what's going on elsewhere. Assassination John Kennedy. I remember lying on my father's study room floor, listening to a record and crying. I didn't even know who he was, really, but I remember being affected by that. Live Aid. We remember that. Um, Chernobyl. World population hits five billion now. Fall of the Berlin Wall the AIDS crisis and other things such as the Falklands War. Now, again, if you've lived in your Generation X, you may have different things, but that is what's going on in the background of our generation. We lived through the consciousness of that. Here are some of our characteristics. Highly independent, more likely to grow up with divorced parents, first generation with both parents in the workforce. That is profoundly important, I think. We start to see yeah, an impact in the family life of, of the way that worked itself out. Typically well ed educated. Yeah, state funded university didn't have to pay a thing. Resourceful. They're known to get things done. Good work life balance on the whole. Influence of MTV. Cynical mistrust of systems. Cynical mistrust of systems. That was fascinating. We often think it's youngest, but there's a big, big mistrust in the Generation X which we've got to tap into. Embrace techno technology advances because we created them. So, you know, that's, that's really important as well. And more likely to go after what they feel than what is sensible. There's that rebelling from the rationality of their parents. Again, really interesting if we're going to tap into the emotional response to climate change. That's just something I think is interesting. I love this quote. I've blacked out, blanked out a swear word just because I thought it's a bit naughty to put it in there. But I know we Gen Xs take a lot of blank but you have to admit our sneering distrust of everything turned out to be 100% correct, which I just think is, is quite fun. Some of the memes are quite, quite funny out there. Now we move on to Generation Y. And if you've got, you might have grandchildren or nieces or children in your church, young, young adults. I, I run the 20s group and they are all millennials. Fascinating. Came up um, at an age at the turn of the new century. Don't get muddled up. They're not the ones born then. They're the ones who came of age. Um, they went through the birth of the Internet. First generation to, be to begin careers with the Internet. When they started out, they had block phones. They didn't have phones till they were much older. They didn't have that. They had MSN. None of this WhatsApp and Snapchat stuff. So they were kind of the beginning of that. End of apartheid. Death of Diana. Now, 9-11 happened, domestic terrorism. That was an enormous part of many of their childhoods because of the ens ensuing parental and um, scholastic change. So it's the way schools change. If you walk around your neighborhood now and look back to photographs then, how many schools have massive high fences? 
everything's fenced off. It just wasn't before that in the same way. Invasion of Iraq and then the economic decline in early career. I think that is really important when you look at what comes next. So millennials characteristics grew up with endless possibilities, told they could do anything, all this, so you can be anything at all. Actually, you can't, but they were told that. They hugely value deep connections, but they're a lot of time on social media. They're always on, and there's something around, this is the first generation that's got blurred boundaries between work and home. Gen X, the generation above, turn it off, they don't. Other generations can view millennials as entitled because they want it all and they want it now. And there's something around that generation do carry that slight angst. If you talk in my, my 20s group, they really feel that, that both generations hate them, which is interesting. They generally struggle with negative feedback. Uh, they're known to live for the moment. The tagline, you only live once, and they've got that sort of branding. And they are the boomerang generation. If you're watching COVID, they're the ones who are back living with their parents because of the soaring house prices. And let's look at this. This is true. My parents are 29. This is a millennial speaking. Let's buy a house for $10,000. Yes, and then me at 29, the millennial. Dear landlord, will it be okay if I hang a picture on the wall of the apartment that I rent for $2,000 a month? And there's this, this understanding that the system hasn't delivered. Again, interesting when we want to tap into sense of civil disobedience, the system hasn't delivered. And then Generation Z. Um, these guys, my children all fulfill into this, never known a world without internet. And you might have teenagers yourself, so just bear this in mind, or grandchildren. Facebook was invented, 77 terror terrorist attack in London. Again, then the enormous uptick in parental helicopter parenting, all right? The Madeleine McCann disappearance and the iPhone introduced, again, both, both profoundly impactful in terms of um, attitude. Barack Obama becomes president, and then the UK MP expense scandal. And there's many, many more. This is what their personality types are known for. Generation Z, digital generation, okay? 40% are self-identified digital device addicts. We're not talking, you know, in, enjoying it, addicts. <laughs> Always had instant access to data on any topic. So there's less reading of books and newspapers, but far more interaction with influencers, etc. They will not call, they will text, and many will be social media junkies, okay? 61% would rather be an entrepreneur than an employee. Um, interesting, this one, lower rates of drug abuse, alcohol intake, smoking, and teenage pregnancy, um, maybe due to socializing online and not physically with people through gaming and so on. So that's, that's them. Um, Generation Z characteristics. So they think more about the future than any previous generation. The high levels of comparison and mental health issues, health conscious, less likely to go to church, more likely to think for themselves and not believe authority figures. Again, that's profoundly important. I think um, the youth climate movement will hopefully will be seeing some of this. I'm gonna send these slides over to them just for interest. Activists, they are hyper aware of world's affairs, including political, terrorist and climate change, et cetera. Multitaskers, much more tolerant than any other generation around cultures, sexual orientation, race, look at Black Lives Matter, driven on by this age group. So that's a whistle-stop tour. Now, what's interesting is, so what in a way, how can we build understanding across the generations? So what I want us to do in our breakout rooms, Ruth's gonna put these in the chat, are these questions, what are our individual blind spots because of the generation that we have been influenced by living, growing up in. So what are our individual blind spots? Be honest, talk together. Secondly, what are our church blind spots due to the dominant generational voice? If your church is stuffed full of boomers, what are the blind spots you're gonna have, okay? Third one, what Christian slash theological blind spots might there be in your generation? Again, think around that. Um, Fourthly, and I think these are the ones I really want us to get to, is what holds your generation back from NVDA and breaking the law and taking action? The very nature that you're on this group means you are not being held back from NVDA, etc. But think about the generational trends that's causing that. And then lastly, what can we as CCA and as individuals do with this new understanding? How can we help this inform the way we relate to churches, talk to councils, you know, etc., etc., etc.?